Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with an awesome new knife consult for you on the Riot Knives K2. Now, this video is a little bit behind the times because the K2 has actually been out for about three years. If you'll recall, the Riot Knives K series came out uh, in about 2017 as a demonstration of in-house design and quality. Riot got its start uh, uh, as a Chinese manufacturer of mid-tech knives. They contracted with a lot of well-known knife designers and made a series of mid-tech knives. However, the K series represented Riot's attempt at doing in-house designs and the K2 was one of the best of those models. If you go back on my channel a long time ago, I did a video on the K1. Now I've handled all of the K models, but I haven't gotten to make a video on the K2 as of yet, even though this was probably my favorite of those designs. There were four K models in total. This one was probably the most reasonably and normally designed. The other ones had a bit more of uh, eccentric designs. They were a little bit more uh, creative in their overall design. This is a very traditional looking knife and I always really liked it, but I always felt a little bit disappointed because the options in the titanium handled models had some very strange milling on the handle and I just didn't love the titanium milling patterns and so I never ended up getting it even though I really liked the blade. <clears throat> this blade is a very nice Japanese Tanto style grind and we'll get into that a little bit more but I always really wanted it and now there is a new model that is available. This is the K2 Collector. This is brought to us by the folks over at the Knife Joker. I'm gonna reach over here and grab the card here and just do my little stint for them. Travis over there at the Knife Joker, they have a physical shop in Bishop, California. You can give them a call, you can follow them on Instagram, you can go to their website, you can send them an email here. Go ahead and pause the video to get the details on this. But thank you to the Knife Joker for sending this one along for me to check out. And I'm so glad he did because I have really wanted to get a K2 uh, on the table. I've handled a couple of them and I really enjoyed them, but again, the handle milling kept me from loving it. What Travis has done is uh, made a dealer exclusive with Riot with some very special features. Immediately, you're going to notice this front scale. This is done in fat carbon, carbon fiber. Fat carbon being a European uh, carbon fiber producer. I forget exactly which uh, country they're out of. I want to say it's something like uh, Belarus or the Ukraine or something like that. It's somewhere over there and uh, forgive me, I'll put the information down below. In any case, they make some of the highest quality carbon fiber in the world and among knife collectors, uh, it has become very popular. The material is excellent quality. Every maker that works with the stuff is absolutely blown away by how strong it is and how well it machines. And so to have Riot get their hands on some of this very special designer carbon fiber that we've really only seen utilized in some custom knives uh, and apply it to their uh, production line is very special indeed. So let's go ahead and get some vital signs on this knife so we know what we're working with here. The K2 is not a small knife. All of the K series were rather large knives. <clears throat> Officially, this says that the knife is 3.875 inches, and as you can see, it's just slightly under four inches in overall length. You're looking at a hair under nine inches in overall uh, length of the whole knife, maybe 8.9 inches. Your handle length is a hair under five inches, maybe 4.9 with an effective grip area at about 4.5 inches right there. The handle width uh, comes in at a relatively svelte 0.54 at its thickest point, and the blade stock is coming in at 160 thousandths. Uh, that is a standard blade size, blade thickness uh, that we see in a lot of modern folding knives. So let's bring out another couple of knives for a size comparison. As I mentioned, it's a rather large knife. So if I bring out the Spyderco Paramilitary 2, 
it's actually going to be significantly bigger. And then, of course, next to the bug out as well, it's also going to be much, much bigger. So the only other knife that I have on the table that can even compare is this CKF Justice 2.0. Now, this has a full 4-inch bladed knife, so you can see uh, that is, it is a little bit longer. Perhaps if I line the blades up just so, this blade is just a hair longer, so you can see where that's happening. But it is not a small knife. However, with this carbon fiber front scale, it actually pairs the weight down to something that is actually very usable. The uh, regular full titanium models come in at over five ounces, and this is coming in at 4.67 ounces. So it sheds uh, a good amount of weight. It is a noticeable difference. Uh, anything under five ounces, you start to really notice the lightness start to happen, at least for my carry. I have to carry in scrub pants often, and so every half an ounce does make a difference. Uh, and above about five and a half ounces, it starts to become too heavy to carry for me. So I'm really happy that this got lightened up with the carbon fiber. Let me go ahead and break this knife down anatomically for you so you can see the beauty of this blade. Up front is this gorgeous chunk of M390 steel. Riyadh is known for doing excellent heat treats on their steel. I actually had a discussion recently with Pete of Cedric Ada uh, knife videos. He's one of the best uh, knife related YouTube channels that uh, is out there. And he was actually comparing uh, M390 from Wii and from Riot, and he had noticed that the Riot M390 seemed to hold an edge considerably longer. Um, and I do believe that David Ding and the Riot team are really sort of the ultimate uh, high-end production manufacturer uh, out of China right now. This blade is beautifully finished with a hand-rubbed satin, that's right. These blades, despite being production knives, are actually ground and then finished by individuals who know how to do this stuff. And it has a beautiful hand-rubbed satin on the primary uh, bevel here, as well as on the flat. Uh, there is a nice contrasting angled satin on this uh, grind, the flat grind out front. This is a compound ground knife uh, in a very traditional Japanese tanto shape. It has this swooping belly here that comes to the tanto tip and then a straight uh, belly right here. It has a nice wedge up top with a slight upward tilt that gives the overall knife a very Quaken style profile. A Quaken being one of the smaller knives that you might carry to accompany your katana or your smaller swords. This was something that you would carry almost like a pocket knife uh, it was a fixed blade knife, and so this is very uh, much hearkening back to that tradition of the Quaken style knife with its overall shape and form. The blade came unbelievably sharp, beautifully, beautifully sharpened. Uh, it's got a very nice, thin, thin, thin hollow grind right here, incredibly thin behind the edge. Slices very well, and you get a little bit more of a robust tip for the piercing cuts. The tip is awesome. I've used it for some piercing cuts. Really incredibly sharp tip. Uh, and I know that I can rely on this blade uh, and then take care of it after the fact. It uh, f flies freely. Uh, obviously, it is a flipper knife. It has the integrated flipper tab right here. That tab is very comfortable. Riot really understood sort of the enthusiast aspect of the flipper tab. All too often, certain flipper tabs are not very comfortable to play with all day. Uh, this knife actually sacrifices a little bit in terms of grip. There, it's not the most grippy uh, flipper tab, uh, and I, the detent is strong enough that I occasionally will miss it, but it's not uncomfortable enough I could just flick it all day without any sort of finger pain. And that is something to think about when we're talking about high-end collecting uh, on this level right here. People who are buying these high-end knives are buying these things for as much uh, the fidget factor as they are for the functionality factor. They want a beautiful, fun, smooth, fast knife with a great detent and great action, and they want to be able to play with it all day. This is one of those knives that you can do that. It is not uncomfortable here, and then it is not uncomfortable to release the knife. So let's go ahead and talk about the pivot. Uh, this is running on ceramic ball bearings on the inside in typical Riot fashion. Absolutely fantastic fantastic action. The detent, 
could not be more crisp and perfect, and the action could not be more smooth. I had been looking at buying a Shirogorov or another Chris Reeve knife uh, recently, uh, and suddenly I don't have that urge anymore because this knife is as smooth uh, as most Shiro's and it is just every bit as strong and useful as any CRK and so I'm just blown away by how much fun this thing is to play with. Now the K2 has been around for a while and so you probably know about all this already. Let's go ahead and move back to the new part of this knife and that is the stuff going on on the handle. Let's take an appreciation for this gorgeous carbon fiber it has incredible chatoyance. I hope that it's being captured on this video right here. Uh, the way that the light reflects off of this carbon fiber is very difficult to uh, show in any photograph. Any still photograph is not going to show that liveliness. Another thing to appreciate is that there are actually two different colors of blue going on in this carbon fiber. I don't know if this is his Arctic Storm carbon fiber. That one may have some white in it. This one is the two shades of blue. You're going to see a darker, almost teal colored blue, which is great for Dr. Frunky greenish blue that I really like so much, as well as a lighter blue. Now the difference between this carbon fiber and another carbon fiber that uh, I really really like this is the carbon plate green carbon fiber you're gonna see this on my uh, green chamois over here this has titanium metal flakes that are anodized green and the blue is also like that as well um, I really like that because it gives a little bit of depth to the colored part of the carbon fiber the fat carbon colors tend to be a little bit more flat um, and even though that's not really a bad thing, it's not always my favorite, but I have to say getting this in hand and seeing it in real life has really changed my opinion of it because the flat does not have the reflective surface and so it adds a lot of contrast uh, to this material and it's really nice. Something else that this scale does to this knife that was missing from the original Riot K series it kind of gives it a soul. There's something about some pocket knives uh, that I like to see a bit of soul, a bit of character in a knife to really make me want to keep holding it and using it. So many knives today really lack a lot of character. They're rather boring and the K series kind of suffered from that. They were nicely made, but the K2 just sort of was missing that factor for me. It just seemed a little bit too forced. Uh, it's hard to really put my finger on it. This knife, however, with this scale, suddenly the knife has a fingerprint. Suddenly this is the only knife that's going to ever look like this because this material will never machine the same way twice. So someone else, even with the same material, will not ever have this specific knife. And somehow, suddenly, this knife has a lot more character. Add to that the weight savings, and then my favorite part about this scale, this fat carbon stuff is so rigid and so strong. If, uh, if you get a sheet of it, I've owned some sheets of his material before, it has a resonance to it, almost like a solid piece of metal. And so when you open the knife, you get a nice acoustic feel and sound uh, that really augments the experience. That is a unique thing to this material and you have to sort of be there to experience it. It will never come through on this video right here. But those three things, the unique look, the lightweight, and the extra unique sound that this generates really creates a different effect when you're playing with this knife. Now let's go ahead and look at the back side here and immediately you're gonna notice this dark clip. Yes, this is zirconium. This is the first time that zirconium has been seen on this K2. Uh, and this was part of the collector uh, edition right here. It comes with this beautiful clip as well as the backspacer done in zirconium. And it is very tastefully done. It's very subtle. The black really matches well with the black of the carbon fiber, the polished look. You're also going to notice if you look very closely is that the clip is actually stonewashed and then it's darkened and so it doesn't have a perfect mirrored finish like some uh, zirconium does a perfect polish it has a little bit of an imperfection to it which makes it very easy to carry uh, it's it's less uh, of a burden to see a perfectly mirrored 
uh, than having a perfectly mirrored surface that might scratch immediately. This has sort of a beaten uh, surface to it. Uh, it almost looks galvanized when you look up close. Uh, and then it's darkened, and so I really like that. Another great thing is that it's got a very plain titanium frame going on right here. This is actually related to a series that the Knife Joker is also selling called the Worker K2. The K2 Worker series that features a plain titanium front and back scale just like this. So the front would be a plain titanium scale as well which is new. They have had only those milled ones before. The plain titanium one looks also very, very cool. My good buddy Eugene Kwan is going to have a video on that one most likely. He's been posting it on his Instagram. He got one of those. So uh, let's talk about some of the finer points on this knife. It is perfectly centered. Absolutely gorgeous grinds. It has a steel lock bar insert with an included over travel stop so you will never uh, move the lock bar too far over. The clip is well away from the lock bar cutout so as not to affect functionality. With this smooth scale on the back it goes into and out of the pocket very easily. Zirconium is a little bit less strong than titanium in terms of the, uh, the grip that it's going to hold on the clip. And so this actually has a beautiful amount of flex to it that goes in and out of the pocket very well. Zirconium similarly has a very nice modulus of elasticity and it will bounce back. It actually functions very similarly to titanium in that regard. And so it's a very durable material uh, despite its sort of jeweled and beautiful appearance. The other thing that I really enjoy about this knife, and I mentioned it already, is that you can just play with this thing all day long. This is really a, a wonderful fidget knife. Uh, it has a perfect action, a great sound, a great feel and quality in the hand, and that just cannot be denied. Uh, Riot really brings a lot of value uh, to the equation with this knife. Now, I mentioned value. The price on this on the Knife Joker site is $445. That is a significant increase over the base model K2 that comes in at $350. Now, if you compare this to other knives in the $450 price range, you might be looking at things like the Hinderer XM18 or the Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza. You may even be looking at a lower end Shirogorov or something like that. So, this is pretty hotly contested territory and it's going to take quite some convincing to get people to buy these knives. I will say that this material right here is very unique. This is a very limited series of knives so its sort of specialness will be maintained. Uh, I imagine this would hold its value relatively well uh, if you're worried about such things. But what you're really getting is a fully customized experience. You get the zirconium, you get the fat carbon scale, you get the unique back here, the brand new setup. This is really much closer to something like a mid-tech style knife like Riot was doing before where it is a very specialized, nearly custom experience with the excellent production quality of this Chinese knife manufacturer uh, that is essentially at the very, very top of the production knife game. So I am really, really blown away by this knife. I was not really expecting to love this knife. Uh, Travis uh, genuinely had to ask me three or four times before I committed to it. Uh, because I didn't know if I was going to like it. The older K2s lacked that sort of uh, soul appeal to me, and finally, this knife has captured it. So I can wholeheartedly recommend these K2 Collector Series. They have certain versions that have Damasteel blades, they have plain blades, they have the Worker Series. So go over to the Knife Joker website. Uh, I'll bring out that card again, and you can go and check out the K2 Collector and let me know what you guys think. They have uh, different uh, versions of the K2 on that site as well as plenty of other knives. I've, I've, they're doing some great Spyderco exclusives as well so it's a really nice site to have on your list of places to pick up pocket knives. So uh, really happy to have this one in hand. This one is actually he sent this to me to evaluate and I like it so much that I'm going to buy it. I want to keep this knife. That's how much I like it. 
Uh, if that's not a strong endorsement, I don't know what else is. But thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of this refreshed K2 Collector Edition down below in the comments. Click like and subscribe uh, to my channel here. And as always, guys, this is Dr. Frunky saying take care.